Okay, so we're back with part two. Um, so we were talking about money in the French Revolution. And here on the right side, this is called a sou. Okay, you would pronounce it a sou. Um, it's a coin that is used during the French Revolution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have like a little activity for you guys to do on the next slide. But let me explain. So urban worker wages, how much they were making at the time. If you were considered a skilled worker, you made about 30 to 60 sous a day. Okay. And I'll explain how much sous represent in maybe dollars or something like that. Then an unskilled worker, they would make about 15 to 20 sous a day. Okay, so to give you an idea, during the French Revolution, a loaf of bread would be about nine sous, and then it was raised to 12 sous. Okay, so unskilled or skilled worker makes a big difference on how much food you can afford at that time. All right, so this is what you're going to do in your guided notes as an activity. Okay, I want you guys to choose. Okay, you are either a skilled worker and you have 45 sous a day. Or you are an unskilled worker and you have 18 sous a day. Okay, so I just averaged out how much they made. So choose which one you want to be, a skilled worker or an unskilled worker. Skilled worker might be a little bit easier for this activity. Unskilled worker, if you like a challenge, I say go for it, okay? So you're going to choose what you are. Now, here is your shopping list, okay? Your shopping list here on the right side this is how much everything costs, okay? So you have your price of how much you make on a daily basis. What I want you guys to do is in your guided notes, make your shopping list right here with what it costs and how much you have, okay? So take a second and pause the video right here and come up with your shopping list. Maybe you really, really like cheese. So you buy 18 sous worth of cheese. I don't know. Do whatever you want, okay? But this is what you would be able to get per day. Go. Okay, so now this is how much sous, how many sous something cost at the beginning of the revolution. Now, this is when prices were inflated and when prices went up, okay? And you still make the same amount of money, whether it's 45 or 18 sous a day, this is your new shopping list and how much everything costs. Now I want you to, with the same amount of sous that you had per day, whether you were a skilled or unskilled worker, I want you to make a new shopping list on what you can afford with the price raises on the left side. So we're not using this one anymore. Okay, so now what does your shopping list look like for what you can get on a daily basis? Go. All right, so here you can kind of see that it's a pretty big difference on the prices, right? Milk and cream basically doubled. What I did was I doubled everything, which happened a lot of times during the French Revolution. Now, I cut you guys a break. Cheese is still worth the same, okay? But everything else basically doubled. So that kind of gives you an idea of what it was like to maybe go to a supermarket for the first time um, at the beginning of the revolution and then at towards why the revolution was happening, it's because of these price raises and think of like if you went to the supermarket and they just doubled the price of everything, not a good day, right? Okay, so how much is this in dollars, okay? So you're trying to think like how much is this in US dollars? Now, the way that I was able to research this, this is talking about US dollars from the 1700s. So think like maybe with some inflation, I don't know how much it would be maybe in today, but you have six francs, okay, I'll explain a franc, equals one US dollar, okay? 20 sous equals one franc. Oops, franc, okay? So then if you do 20 times six, that equals 120 sous. That 120 sous equals one US dollar. Which means with the prices of what you were gaining before, so 45, 18 sous a day, whatever you chose, that makes one sous less than one US cent, okay? 
So kind of to put into perspective what people were earning at this time, not much at all. So let me explain really quick what's going on. So although peasants were free, they were still having to deal with the debts that they had to um, kind of accumulate, that they had accumulated and passed on from generation to generation during the Middle Ages. But the first and second estates paid almost no taxes at all. Peasants and urban workers were burdened by taxes on everything from land to soap to salt. They were taxed and taxed and taxed on everything because here's the thing. The higher up people, we're talking about the nobility, the clergy, the royalty, right? They wanted to continue their lavish lives, but they were basically spending a lot of money without making a lot of money which put a lot of the burden onto the peasantry, 97%, that lower working class. So throughout France and the third estate, throughout France, the third estate called for privileged classes to pay their share, okay? In 1789, half of the government's income from taxes went to paying interest on debts from previous wars. So I'm gonna cut this one off here for part two. How did the lives of the third estate differ from the lives of the clergy and the nobles? So in your guided notes, you should have a section to answer this question. I'm going to end part two here and I'll see you guys with part three. Make sure to answer that question. Think about it. Maybe if it were on a test, how would you answer that question? Okay. All right. Answer. How did the lives of the third estate differ from the lives of the clergy and the nobles? See ya.